Blue Origin's New Shepard suffers a catastrophic failure during its uncrewed suborbital launch. WSN Space Newscast has the story. Greetings! The Blue in Blue Origin took on a sad meaning early on Monday when a routine uncrewed flight of the New Shepard rocket ended in flamey failure and a solid rocket escape motor made by a legacy aerospace giant saved the day. With Virgin Galactic standing down for prolonged development work, the New Shepard failure puts both tourist space businesses on hold. The repercussions for the future of this market, which began with such promise last July, are unknowable at this point. The great news coming out of this anomaly is the success of the solid rocket motor launch abort system, which immediately whisked the capsule away from the failing booster. Some, therefore, would term this a successful failure. You can be sure, nevertheless, that Jeff Bezos will be quite upset by the engine mishap and its implications both for New Shepard and his extensive rocket engine program. The B3 hydrogen-powered single engine of the rocket showed indications of failure, and the vehicle was just beginning to lose control when the escape motor activated. The failure came at max Q, the point of maximum aerodynamic stress on the launch vehicle, and throttling of the engine. Of course, the timing of the engine failure could be pure coincidence. By the way, the booster stage has been referred to in the past as the propulsion module of the rocket. The pusher-type motor is provided by Aerojet Rocketdyne and called the Crew Capsule Escape Solid Rocket Motor, CCESRM. The thrust vector control system for the rocket is designed and made by Blue Origin. Ground tests of the motor were conducted at Aerojet's Camden, Arkansas site. It had been tested fully in 2016 and certainly proved its value today. It has been reported that weather radar for the area did not seem to show the debris cloud that booster breakup would usually produce, so it is not clear whether the rocket impacted intact or was destroyed either by engine failure and aerodynamic loss of control or a flight termination system. The power of the escape motor was evident in the live video. If passengers had been aboard this mission, they would have been briefly subjected to very high G-forces. To Blue Origin's credit, they maintained their video coverage until an apparently normal and safe capsule touchdown. The company tweeted, quote, During today's flight, the capsule escape system successfully separated the capsule from the booster. The booster impacted the ground. There are no reported injuries. All personnel have been accounted for. The FAA issued its own statement, noting that they will oversee the mishap investigation and will need to approve the return of New Shepard to flight. The engine on today's flight is a pumped-fed Hydrolox design. It has a thrust of 110,000 pounds, throttling down to 20,000 pounds for vertical landing. Development officially began nine years ago after Blue Origin abandoned plans for kerosene and peroxide engines. Test flights in the New Shepard rocket began in 2015. For a time, United Launch Alliance, ULA, had considered using it for the Vulcan upper stage in the Advanced Cryogenic Evolved Stage, or ACES. The BE-4 engine, which will power the first stages of both Blue Origin's New Glenn and ULA's Vulcan, uses methane natural gas and is thus not directly related to this engine. However, New Glenn will use two BE-3U vacuum versions of the BE-3 and could be impacted by today's unfortunate failure. The BE-3U is supposed to have 160,000 pounds of thrust at vacuum. 
Today's rocket was the New Shepard 3. It first flew in late 2017 and was on its ninth mission today. Crew capsule RSS HG Wells was mated to this stage, and this rocket was only used for uncrewed flights. The first and so far only crew rated vehicle is NS-4 with capsule RSS First Step. It has accomplished eight flights, six of them crewed, with the most recent on August the 4th. In the history of the program, NS-1 conducted the first full-scale flight in 2015, which saw a safe capsule touchdown. However, the booster was destroyed on landing due to a hydraulic pressure failure in the control system. NS-2 was considered a test vehicle, making five flights through 2016 before being retired. Twitter space nerd Flo from Germany posted this helpful series of still frames from the New Shepard mishap, illustrating the sequence of events. In the annotated version, a piece of debris liberated from the engine area is highlighted by a red circle. WSN has created this slow motion version of the live stream video. It shows an anomalous plume from one side of the BE3 engine which leads to a bright flash in the exhaust plume. The engine then appears to suffer what rocket folks call a rapid unscheduled disassembly, or RUD. Just as the vehicle begins to pitch over from the engine failure, the solid rocket escape motor fires and hurls the capsule safely away from the malfunctioning propulsion stage. With daytime temperatures soaring to 800 degrees Fahrenheit, Mercury seems an unlikely place to find ice, but the poles of the airless planet can be surprisingly frosty. Using images and elevation data from the MESSENGER spacecraft, a team led by Michael Barker of NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center inspected a permanently shadowed north polar crater named Prokofiev which contains a radar bright region thought to be surface ice. Barker and collaborators modeled the crater's elevation, illumination, 
maximum temperature, and depth below the surface at which water ice could be stable. This modeling confirmed that the crater has the right conditions to host surface ice, and further analysis suggests that the radar bright region may be a layer of ice up to 26 meters thick. The ice isn't pure water, though. Part of the ice is covered by a dark silicate or hydrocarbon material, the exact nature of which is unknown. For your Tuesday, it's National Bold is Beautiful Day. We send our good wishes to Artemis Ascent and Entry Flight Director Judd Freeling on this auspicious day. And that's the way space is today. Until tomorrow, add in Explorata toward the unknown in the measureless arena of space. Stay tough and competent, and thanks for watching. Markets were up about 1% today, as traders hoped for an improved inflation report tomorrow. A majority of our WSN watchlist stocks rose, headed by Astra and Terran Orbital. The biggest loser was Black Sky Technology. Reporting from Cyberspace, this is correspondent Karen Calvis.